Hey, welcome to the Hash Knife in the Shoot episode. I am Brandon Carpenter, and this is my son, Kalen. Kalen, what are you going to spring on me today on this episode? So recently, Dad had a he had an issue. <laughs> boo boo. <laughs> yeah. Uh, there's a process that happens after you get thrown from your horse. What is that, Dad? Get up. Okay. You and your vague answers are killing me. <laughs> well, <laughs> wanna, uh, so you've had two major accent. Major one was actually surgical. Uh, this okay. one you now on. had. Okay. Yeah, go you get you got two 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 major ones. I'm almost fifty. I'm pushing fifty nine years old. So been training you has an issue with it. No, I'm saying the length <laughs> of span. I've had a damn good run. Okay. All I right. think you know. I mean, I don't know guys that were, you know, done, done, or killed. Um, and then in that case, it'd be done too. But um, <laughs> since I was nine years old, I went almost 50 years and only two major things. And this wasn't really major. Um, I've only had one major thing. I went to the emergency room, I think. This is the third time. One was just a, one was a dislocated shoulder that really wasn't anything. I wasn't even on the horse. I was trying to kind of save your grandpa a little bit. And I got tangled up and we went down. Yeah. A rope on a horse that was picking it just a weird weird deal i don't i don't count that one though yeah i don't really count that one either but this is yeah i just yeah i got bunged up a little bit but the first thing you do is you get yourself up and make sure you're all right that you know that you can stand up and look at where the hell your horse is at try to get it back and i mean who wants to ride home or or walk home but uh there's two of those are two that i had to walk i had, I had to walk i couldn't couldn't get back up in the saddle and, so uh, what's your what's your first thought as soon as so especially the one where you you knew right away you you busted your scapula which is the shoulder blade in three spots you um shattered your rib cage you oh yeah shattered your clavicle and, <laughs> what what was your first thought like as soon as you did that you're like uh oh now i have to now i have to face lisa is that your, <laughs> is that your well first? oh no 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 and oh your mother is oh my god your mother don't tell her this but she is a freaking angel she is perfect she has done so much to help heal me up when you know and, and things happen you know you get a, you pull your back or something you can't move real well and she's there for you you know i remember one day we were working on a shed and i tweaked my back and she'd never really run big power tools that much and she says well let's get this done How, and i because we were like within an hour of being done on this pro on this project and I said, oh, God, I don't know. She goes, no, here, let me get a chair. So she sits, gets me sat in a chair and then I'm telling her what to do. And she's, she's finishing it up. I mean, she's amazing. So when I get banged up, I mean, she's always right there doing whatever I, whatever I have to have. And I, I feel guilty that I can't help her more. So, um, no, the first thing that goes through your mind is as it's happening, um, it's just taking care of business, you know, like that, that big one where I got really really tore up um when i as i was coming off at high speed going down a hill it was a freak deal um it wasn't even the horse that wasn't even bucking i mean it was it just turned out from under me uh going downhill and as i'm coming out i thought three things I thought, oh this is gonna hurt and i thought oh i gotta get my my head over lay it off to the side because i know how to fall you know i've been in martial arts and i was a you know, defensive tactics instructor, you know, sucked at the grappling part. That was my weakness, but I know how to fall or how you should fall. And that I got to get my neck or my head over, or I'm going to break my neck and I'm going to get the wind knocked out of me. So when those three things, you know, I'll just pick things up after that. And I was right. It did hurt. And when I hit, I had my head, my neck way over and landed on a shoulder and completely flopped over. Otherwise, yeah, there's no, there's no doubt I'd have broken my neck, but, and then I couldn't get my breath. I'm like, okay, here it comes. And I hate that feeling. Oh my God. I hate getting the wind knocked out of me. I'm going, uh, 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 and you know, I'm picking pieces and parts up and I'm sitting up and I, then I couldn't raise my arm. I went, oh crap. Reached up and I could feel, I could feel the bones in my clavicle moving or when I tried to move and I picked my arm up. Finally, after a while, I got my breath and I went, oh, this isn't normal. I've punctured a lung. I know it. I just knew it right away. So I knew I had a broken uh, collarbone 
that was, as it turned out, 17 pieces. They pulled pieces out of that, and put putty in there and screws. There's still a screw or two inside of there like when they plated it. But um, avascular, there's nothing to do. They just pull it out and they put putty in to help peel it up. This special kind of stuff. That's pretty cool. And uh, I knew my shoulder blade was broke because I could feel that's where the puncture was in the back. And uh, tons of ribs. I knew ribs were broke. I mean, you, when you break ribs, you know it. Mm. And uh, I, I still couldn't get my breath. And it took a while before I could even, you know, not that feeling of I can't inhale or exhale, that feeling of, okay, I can't inhale or exhale a lot. And it still hurts. I could feel the point where it was. I went, all right. The only thing I, I had a potential thought was, geez, I'm out here. I hope it didn't rupture a spleen because that's right on the same side in that same area. I thought that's potentially there. If you break a collar bar or a shoulder blade, uh, I'm, I've been told by several docs that, you know, half of the time, at least that's a fatality. You've, you've got that much force, but the force is all in that one spot. It wasn't, you know, like in a car wreck where you got massive force all around you. It's just, it was, it was just directed that one spot. So, uh, you know, but the potential for the spleen was there and I was a little concerned about it. So I'm kind of checking my own abdomen and stuff as I'm going, cause I, I used to be an EMT. So I, I kind of knew, you know, how to do some self-assessment, got on my feet, horse is gone. You know, and I, I wasn't getting on him anyway. There was, I couldn't climb up on him with my shoulder, you know, get the weight up there. And, uh, so I started walking home. I found my cell phone. I mean, stuff was scattered from hell to breakfast. Called your mom. And I said, Hey, uh, can you come down and get me? And, uh, she was okay. She thought I was out in the corral and I said, yeah, horse is headed home. And she misunderstood. And this is like, I don't know, six thirty-seven in the morning. It was pretty early, nice early fall morning. And then, uh, she didn't show, she didn't show. So I'm walking home. I'm like a half a mile away. I'm walking home. Pulled my, I had to climb up out of a deal to, in the first place at this coolie we were working our way down into to get on the phone to call her. So I'm like, well, now I'm mostly on the flatter ground. I'll just start walking home. And I was, I don't know, third of the way there. So I'm, here she comes. And we, she picked me up. I got in the vehicle and she goes, what's wrong? The delay was she's looking all over for me and I'm not out there. She thought I was around the corral. So uh, she finally figured out, called me back and I said, yeah, I'm east of, east of the house down the road. So got in the pick or in the i guess we had an expedition at the time she gets me in the driver's or the passenger side and uh she starts to take off and my whole shoulder i'm holding my holding up my uh arm for the collarbone because i knew that you know that's just what how you do to stabilize it and she took off the whole shoulder flopped back and with the inertia taken off and she's like oh my god she saw it happen so she lets off the brake and then that it fall or off the gas and it falls forward. So it's called a floating shoulder. I mean, I had, there was no structure that was holding anything. And she's just like, Oh my God, what do I do? And I said, just, just drive, just drive easy. It's, I mean, there's nothing you can do about it and it hurt, but so we get down there and get the dock and they eventually patch me up. So the first thing is what you're going through your mind. This one is <clears throat> kind of funny. I, I usually you can try to pull a horse out of a, out of a buck or a spook, you know, you just pull her head around real, really quick, as quick as you can and get him into a circle and calm them down and then just diffuse everything. <clears throat> Done it. Jesus. Hundreds, if not, you know, thousands of times. Cause every little horse, it's rare when they don't spook to some little degree. And that just happened to be, well, this is a whole bit different deal where he got spooked by an external thing that was thought he was going to eat him and rightly so i mean it wasn't entirely his his fault but i thought we we're going to go through this fence at first i went oh man i don't want to go through this fence right and he stopped but he was right next to it and i'm thinking oh man we can't i can't i can't let him buck into this thing because he started bucking and i'm like in time with him and and uh i'm talking to him saying easy you're fine you're fine as he's, as he's bucking and he just keeps bucking and I can't turn him into the fence. I can't turn him away because either way, as he swings his body, he's gonna he's gonna get caught in this fence. I'm thinking, ah, I just gotta ride him through this. Hopefully, get, he'll he'll run out of some steam here and calm down a little bit. And then I'm thinking of some things. A friend of ours, Jack Walker, uh, lives out by us. He was just induced to the uh, Military Rodeo Hall of Fame. Did a really good job of. I mean, the dude is he was a freaking specimen, and his body shows it too. He's a little older than me, but. Um, 
I'm thinking of something, a conversation him and I had had some time ago about, you know, he said, if you get it, get in time with these horses, you know, get your feet to hit those stirrups before, you know, both the same time before their front feet hit, you know, you got them in time, you're good. And he's right, you know. And so that's going through my mind as I'm doing, I'm having this conversation again in my mind. And I thought I was going to ride this horse. I thought, no, this is not a big deal. I mean, he's, he's, he's doing, he's getting with it. I couldn't quite believe because he's just doesn't seem like that kind of horse, but uh, I was, we were doing pretty good and uh, everything was fine. And I kicked back and I lost my left stirrup mm. and that's where things started to go South. Cause then I'm, I'm still holding on to him. I'm pulling myself in with my, with my yeah. left rein, keeping myself in the saddle. And I'm, as I, as he jumps and I'm trying to kick my foot in and catch that stirrup with my toe, you know, just cause it's loose and I'm just trying to pick it up. <clears throat> and, uh, that happened about two more jumps trying to catch that stirrup. And then that third jump was like, he turned a little bit or I turned, I don't know exactly what happened. And then I start out of the saddle. Then I get out of time with him and there was no, I, I just wasn't standing. And I never grab a saddle horn. Cause then you'll go out the front of the saddle, you know? So I'm on the ground and I'm thinking the first thing was, or <laughs> cause I don't, that way you don't have to black this out. And, and uh, yeah. And cause I mushed my face into the ground and I felt the break, break when I landed on my uh, elbow and <laughs> I went, yeah. And then I'm thinking, I need this. I got too much to do. I got to ship calves next week. I mean, and then this whole thing, now I got to go backwards on this horse a little bit. I got to work him through it. And yeah. when I'm, when I can get on him, get back able to do something. And, uh, I look down the road as I stand up and I crease the hat, brand new, newer, one of my newer straw hats. I creased it. I'm like, God, I'm straighten it out. I'm like, oh, that's not as bad as I thought. I look up and hear this driver, this truck has actually slowed down and almost stopped to watch what he just helped do. And then he sees me stand up and then takes off that, <clears throat> that made me happy. So, you know, I mean, stuff happens, but yeah, there's things that go through your mind. I mean, you're just, you're in real time trying to do things and you're, you're sorting through, okay, what could happen here? Right. What do I got to do? How am I going to do this? I mean, it just, it happens. It happens very fast, but it's also kind of a, it happens in slow motion at the same time. I mean, you hear mm -hmm. those kinds of things, you know, I mean, they just do, but the slow motion, you're about that far behind that slow part because it's still happening fast yeah. <laughs> and, and uh, yeah, it still hurts to laugh a little bit, but I'm getting around doing all right. You know, there's nothing major. I was, I was kind of surprised. I thought, yeah, I've just pulled a bunch of muscles and there's always a potential you can break a pelvis, but I've assessed people with a broken pelvis as well. And one of the, one of my friends was on the, on the social media, uh, Facebook thing. And she commented on that. She goes, I was pretty sure you didn't break your pelvis from looking at the videos because nobody sits like that with a broken pelvis. I'm like, yeah, I thought the same thing, but you know, you could crack it. I don't want to push it, but Lisa was, she was really concerned because you know, broken pelvis is if you, if it's way broke, that's, that's a life threatening right. uh, injury. And I, I was like, I told your mom, I said, nah, let's just lay here. I'll just kind of keep it easy for a couple of days. I'll be sore. I'm not going to be able to do anything anyway. And I'll bet I get better. We'll be fine. And they're not going to do anything about ribs. That's just a given. I mean, you just don't, unless you're punctured lung. And I knew I didn't puncture lung from past experience. I knew that wasn't an issue. So, um, your mother's overly protective. So it's easier to just, okay, honey. Yeah. We'll go in, get some x-rays and we'll go with my plan after that. <laughs> so that's what happened. <laughs> well, that's good. So stuck with it, fought your way through it self-assessment and then follow mm -hmm. the spouse's advice <laughs> yeah well <laughs> the good part of it is she's you know i couldn't move a whole heck of a lot that first day so she gets you all set up with everything you need and then she has to go to work but i was up and one of the hardest things to do is is not just lay there but you need to get up and move you need to exercise those muscles if you got torn muscles if it's a bone you need to stabilize it but yeah. if it's a muscle you know best thing you can do is work those muscles yeah they're sore they're swollen a little bit but get up and move them and one thing i've noticed now is after what is this about day four or five um not so much that the across the pelvis still hurts quite a bit all those muscles attached you know abdominals and and uh, all the way across the front of my pelvis but i had a hernia surgery uh, well the second hernia surgery um 
I don't know what year that was, 2010. So that's been about 11 years ago. And in order to fix that, they put a piece of mesh in the, in my body and stapled it to my pelvis. And there's once in a while I'll overdo it and I can feel that pull. Well, I feel that pull right now. It really mm. pulled that. And, and I told the doc that when they were going to do dex rays, I said, I got that, that deep, deep pain. And I said, I think it's just where the mesh is stapled to my, uh, pelvis that it feels like that. That's what the pull. So, and you know, if, I don't know what you can see on the x-ray with that. And he goes, oh, I'll take a look. And he looks and he goes, and he comes back and he goes, yep. And you can see the staples. I can, you can, we can make that out in there. And he says, yeah, if you know what that is, I mean, we'll just wait. Give you some drugs if you want. Nothing's broke that we're going to do anything about. So we'll send you home. What kind of drugs do you want? And I'm like, no. nah, none. No. Nah, I don't, I don't, I don't like feeling like that. So I said, how much, how much Tylenol or Advil can I take? He told me, guy my size, I can take seven grams of that stuff a day for a while and without hurt. Yeah. And I'm thinking, you know, and I'm taking 500 milligrams or, you know, like I'm, I just immediately go to liver function though. I was like, you're, exactly. you're, you're practically said, drinking a fifth of whiskey with that, but whatever. Right. And he said, no, seven grams. He says with my weight, um, mm. that's what you can do without doing any liver, any liver damage on a short-term basis, you know, but, um, okay. right. you know, oh, that's good to know. I guess. All of those times that I've done that in the past, don't worry about liver damage because I didn't do seven grams. <laughs> yeah. Well, with that, uh, we did post on social media. I got overwhelming support for dad and his little boo-boo. But uh, yeah, a lot yeah. of good comments. A lot of, we, and I appreciate all that. You know, people, they, they, you know, we don't know you personally necessarily. Some we do. And some of those were good jabs in the eye about, you know, <laughs> mattress, uh, truck. mattress trucks. But uh, <laughs> you know what? I appreciate all of the well wishes. And uh, people calling in, whether they're super concerned. I've had calls from all over the country uh, asking, how you doing? Please call. And some of those days I was just, you know, it doesn't take much at all. And I'm, I'm beat. That pain wears out, you know. I mean, you get yeah. tired easily. And, of course, then I had to go unload hay, that, you know, the day after, two days after that. And, and I had to deliver. I had, we got some butcher steers we're trying to fatten up. And I had to go deliver that, pick that stuff up. And it wears you out. So um, I didn't feel like calling people back necessarily. But I did try, try to text them and, and do that stuff. So, but yeah, thanks a lot, everybody. We really appreciate the well wishes and the, and the love out there. And with that, we'll put this one out the pasture.